Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. Two texts to consider this morning. The first one from the Old Testament reading, Genesis 11. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do, and nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language so that they may not understand one another's speech. And from Acts chapter 2, verse 4, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Here ends our text. Please be seated. My dear friends in Christ, you're all familiar with the story of the Tower of Babel. You're all familiar with the story of Pentecost and how easy to say, oh, look what happened so many thousands of years ago when God came down and confused their speech and they couldn't communicate and then they were dispersed. And then look at the remedy, how God comes down at Pentecost. The Holy Spirit comes and descends on the followers of Jesus, gives them the ability to speak in other tongues in essence, in essence, overcoming the divisions that had occurred thousands of years before. And that's okay. You can look at it that way. That's basically what happened. But why? Why did God want to confuse the speech of the people as they're building this city and tower? And is there something wrong with building great big buildings? When the Sky Dome in Toronto was being built 30 some years ago, a uh, political cartoonist drew a little picture of a pedestal, and on that pedestal was a model of the Sky Dome. And then it showed a person kneeling in prayer in front of this pedestal with the model of the Sky Dome. I thought it was pretty funny and appropriate that today, society, these are the places of worship. You want to see excitement? Stay up and watch a Raptors game. It is getting pretty good, actually. That's another point altogether. But the people back in the Old Testament days in Genesis were building this tower. They wanted to make a name for themselves. They wanted to be men of renown. What were they thinking about? They were thinking about themselves. They were thinking about their own glory. They were thinking about their own accomplishments. They were thinking about what they could do together. They were impressed with themselves. God didn't come down and confuse their language to spoil their fun. God came down and confused their language because they were communicating and thinking about the wrong things. The wrong things. They weren't building this to the glory of God. They were building this to the glory of themselves. And sometimes it does seem like a fine line in the things that we do in life. And often church buildings have been so huge, you, you really have to wonder, well, well, who's being glorified here? They're, they're built to the glory of God, but it's, it's, is it? Well, we hope so. We try to. But God came down and confused their language because he was concerned about their eternal well-being. He knew that they were focusing on the wrong things focusing on themselves, their accomplishments, their abilities, their teamwork, their camaraderie, all that stuff. And in the midst of that, they weren't thinking about God. So, let's confuse them. Let's make it so they can't communicate with one another. Well, communication, it's the key to relationships. It's the key to teamwork. It's, it's, it's key to so many things. 
In a marriage, you need to talk, you need to communicate, you need to hammer out your, your differences and your misunderstandings, and it's often so difficult to communicate with anyone, especially someone with whom you live, and they think they know you, and you think you know them, and you think that if you say something, they should understand what it is you're saying. So a couple of winters ago, I was standing out in the front of the house in the midst of a snowstorm because, I don't know, it was a snowstorm. And the, the, the plow truck guy came by, and I stopped him. You need a coffee or anything? Need a bathroom break? You okay? Everything good? Because it was a bad snowstorm. And he said, no, I'm fine. Thank you very much. And I said, yeah, you guys are, I said, this is a lot of snow. He said, yeah, we're having a hard time keeping up with it. And I said, well, it's Ottawa. Meaning, we get a lot of snow here. But unbeknownst to me, as I spoke those words, he took it as an insult to the city's ability to remove snow. He took it as an insult, as if I were implying that the city needed to buy more equipment to remove more snow and went off and said, well, you know, we can't buy so much extra equipment to only use a few times a year. And, and I'm sitting there going, what are you talking about? I was totally confused by his response. I was saying, there's a lot of snow. He was saying, oh, you think we don't have enough equipment to deal with it. I was saying, you're working hard, I really appreciate it. He thought, I was saying, can't you guys get more employees and more equipment and do this quicker? So even in the best of intentions were often misunderstood. Sometimes you try to clear up that misunderstanding. Sometimes you realize that the communication gap is so great that you just won't be able to. Especially standing outside a snowplow driver with a loud engine going in the midst of a snowstorm. I wished him well and didn't try to explain myself. I thought I'd probably done enough damage for the moment. But how many times have you tried to say something to someone and they misunderstood you? Innumerable. You can't count that high. And you are probably speaking the same language as the person to whom you were speaking. Right? Speaking the same language, speaking English or your mother tongue, whatever it is, you're speaking to someone you think that they would understand the simple words that you're saying, and then they don't. <clears throat> so, poor communication. We bring so much to any conversation. We bring our past. We bring our own understanding of words, which sometimes isn't totally accurate. Or sometimes has a certain bias or a regional affect that had a little different meaning than the person with whom we're speaking, if they came from a different region. We evaluate the posture of the other person with whom we're speaking. We interpret body language, tone of voice. All these things are clicking in the way in the back of our mind as we engage in conversation. One time on a flight many years ago, the stewardess, no, the flight attendant, <laughs> stopped to ask me if I understood how the emergency door worked. And she came up to talk to me, and I grabbed my iPad to power it off. And she said, I'm trying to talk to you. Can you please put that down? And I just looked at her and said, I'm turning it off. <laughs> and she might have thought I was turning it off in response to what she said, but I was turning it off, trying to be polite and make sure it was off before the no electronic devices sign came on and all that stuff. And I tried very humbly to listen to her explanation about how the emergency door works. I thought, wow, that would really do it if I blew that. <laughs> But how often we misunderstand other people. Driving in the car the other day with someone, I flashed my bright lights to let someone over. <laughs> and the person in the passenger seat said, what are you doing? I said, well, I flashed my bright lights so that the person knows they can move over. And she said, I thought that meant that you should get out of their way and not move over. I said, oh, well, I've kind of always used it to mean it's okay to move over. So communicate, miscommunication can take place in a variety of ways, variety of fashions. Someone has a really bad headache, and they're speaking to you, and they look very stern. They look like they're angry. 
They just have a bad headache. But all the while we're engaging in conversation with someone, our, the back of our brain is clicking and reading and interpreting and trying to figure out what's that person's goal? What are they really feeling like? What are they really trying to communicate? I hear their words, but it doesn't match with the way they're standing and looking and the expression on their face. It's tough. It's tough. So in come differences in our communication. Maybe we started out with differences, and by communication we're trying to remedy those differences, and, and we try, but it doesn't work. And sometimes those differences grow bigger in the midst of, conver of conversation. You've had arguments, <laughs> probably once or twice in your life, with someone. Well, these differences lead to disagreements. And then when there's disagreements, that can lead to disorder and to the point where communication just doesn't work. You literally have to back off and take a break. Well, think about what happened to those people who are trying to build this city and tower. All of a sudden, they're speaking in a way that the other person doesn't understand. Of course, there's going to be differences. There's going to be disagreements. And there ended up being disorder as the people are scattered. As they're scattered, as they're separated. But understand that God's intent was to wake them up. God's intent was to get them to focus on the important things of life or the important thing of life, namely God himself. His goal, his motivation, his intent was always for the benefit of those people. Communication. It is critical in any relationship. And I still marvel at how often I am misunderstood. Misunderstood. People describe motivations to me that have nothing to do with what I'm thinking or what I want. People don't seem to get the word order, and I think I'm speaking English to someone who knows English, <laughs> and they misinterpret, they misunderstand what I say. God has to remedy this problem, and of course did. Now, <laughs> we like to think about the day of Pentecost as being the birthday of the New Testament church. We like to think about the Holy Spirit coming down on the apostles' head as a, a, appearing as tongues of fire, as giving them the words that God wanted them to have, enabling them to speak in other tongues, communicate to people who didn't speak their language, communicate to them this wonderful message about Jesus. Because that's the point. Convey the message about Jesus. Tell others about Jesus. So Elijah's fleeing from Jezebel, and he goes and hides in a cave and all that. You remember the story. <sighs> Trying to listen to God. A big wind comes by, then an earthquake, then fire. But God wasn't in those. But then a whisper. A whisper. A whisper. A calm, measured, gentle voice. God brings calm to our disordered lives. God brings a word of peace where there's disruption. God speaks a word that's a good word. It has value. There's substance to it. It has meaning. Value, substance, meaning, it's a good word that God speaks. It's also a truthful word. God can't lie. God can't be untruthful. God speaks a word of truth. A good word, that's a true word. 
Sanctify them by the truth. Thy word is truth. God's word. God's word, always accompanied by the Holy Spirit, sanctifies us. Sanctifies us. As our hymn put it, thy strong word bespeaks us righteous. God's word does that. It's a good word, it's a truthful word, and it's a clear word. God's word is a clear word. We understand his meaning. We understand his intent. We understand his objective. We understand his motivation because he's a great communicator. And that good, truthful, clear word says plainly and simply, I love you. Your sins are forgiven through the shed blood of Jesus. You have peace. You have peace. Thousands of years ago in the book of Genesis was recorded that story about the confusion of the language of the people and all the disorder that came about and how they were scattered. <laughs> and sometimes your life feels like that. Communication's wrong. Everything's busy. Nobody seems to understand you. You can't fit into the teamwork. The work isn't getting done. It's all frustration. It's all, let's go bang our heads against some wall. That's the way your life feels sometimes. And if not, if not, please make an appointment to come speak with me because I want to know your secret. <laughs> but in the midst of all this clutter, in the midst of all this busyness, in the midst of all this scheduling, in the midst of all this miscommunication, God steps into our world with his very gentle yet powerful, effective word, always accompanied by his Holy Spirit, and he speaks to our spirits and says, I love you. You are forgiven through the shed blood of Jesus. And you have peace. You have peace. You have the peace of God which passes all of our human understanding. You have the peace of God. Which means in the midst of all this chaos of daily life, you can on occasion stop and think, it's okay. God is on my side. He that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. Because God communicates a good word, a truthful word, and a clear word. And it's a, an effective and powerful word. Sanctify them by the truth. Thy word is truth. That's clear. Your sins are forgiven you. That's clear. My peace I give to you. That's clear. Come unto me. That's clear. It is finished. That's clear. Today you will be with me in paradise. That's clear. <clears throat> not ambiguous. Not confusing. Not hard to understand. But strong. Good. Clear. Effective. Truthful. Thanks be to God for sending the Holy Spirit who enables us to understand the Word, empowers us to embrace the Word, and encourages us to live that Word. Amen. Please stand. Now may the peace of God which passes all of our human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.